ask us to rise with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <coughs> and the first order of business is to, to swear in our new police officer. And you're Chase Bossy. Yes, I am. And I'm Bob Butler. Nice to meet you. And I'm going to read some things to you and ask you to repeat after me. Okay. Okay? And if I get ahead of you, just tell me to slow down. Okay. Sometimes do, do it quicker than I should. So, uh, I, Chase Bossy. I, Chase Bossy. Bossy, sorry. Yes, sir. Good. <laughs> Solemnly swear. Solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution. That I will support the Constitution. And will obey the laws of the United States. And will obey the laws of the United States. And of the state of Maine. And of the state of Maine. That I will. That I will. In all respects. In all respects. Observe the ordinances of the town of Walderboro. Observe the ordinances of the town of Walderboro. And statutes of the state of Maine. And statutes of the state of Maine. And will faithfully discharge. And will faith faithfully discharge. The duties of full-time patrolmen the duties of a full-time patrolman. Thank you very much, and Thank congratulations. You. Would you say some words, please? First of all, I'd like to thank you guys for letting me have an extra position that we've been wanting for a long time. We were very picky about it. It took us six to seven months of not filling it because we wanted the right guy. When Chase applied, we knew it was the right guy. So I'm very happy to have Chase, and thanks once again for the position, and I'm looking forward to working with him. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Well, I'm going to You can come to me. <laughs> okay. We can do that. Do you have to back on over here. Right. Do you know the town manager? Yes, I do. <laughs> yeah, yes, nice I interviewed him. <laughs> nice to meet Welcome. you. Welcome. What's your name? You know who I am. <laughs> Chase Bossy, nice to meet you. Adrian and Clem Collinmore. Chase Bossy, nice to meet you. Congratulations. Thank you. He did a great job during the interview. And he comes to us from um, Lincoln County Sheriff's Department. <laughs> I think I've seen you on Jan the wanted Jan wanted to know your oh, background I, I knew a he bit. was from them, but I didn't know. Yeah. And this is his audience. wife. Hi, Nikki. Nikki. Hi, Nikki. And she teaches in Union, Union oh. and they live in Wiscasset. So he'll, he's going to be around for a long time. Good. Great. And you're most welcome. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And you don't have to stay for the entire meeting. You can go now. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Bye, kids. Bye. Okay. <laughs> can I come make cookies with you? Sure. Okay. She can't come in to the town office and not come and see me. It's just the sweetest thing. So we have two public hearings this evening. Uh, one regards the town of Waldenboro's general assistance ordinance. And the law requires that municipal officers adopt the ordinance after notice and hearing. And I believe we've given seven days notice as required. So um, is there a motion to open so the public hearing? Is there a second? A second. All in favor? Okay. Is there any public comment on this issue? I'd ask Daryl if he wouldn't mind to say a few words about it. So each year the state comes up with the new numbers uh, for overall allowed per person, food, allotment, rent. Um, the utilities are based on gallons uh, per month so that has stayed the same electricity stayed the same and uh, personal stayed the same the the biggest change um, for years a cremation was 785 and a burial was 1125 they have increased those I think they were those numbers 37 years ago when I started this but they went to 1025 for cremation and 1475 for burial so that's up 240 and 350. Uh, we didn't budget for that. I didn't realize it was coming, but another year the budget will go up. And hopefully we'll be all right in that regard. Um, overall, 
it was about $38 a person that went up. Um, one person did go up $61 for just a single, and uh, food went up about $2 per person. Rents uh, did increase $73 uh, for the efficiency, and then only $11 for the two-bedroom, four-bedroom. But those are the new numbers, and recommend they be approved. Gladly answer any questions. <coughs> Questions? Thanks, Gerald. Uh, is there a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. I'll second it. All in favor? Okay. Is there a motion to vote and adopt the general assistance ordinance? That's posted. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Uh, the second public hearing concerns a liquor license request for a farm on Bremen Road, EBA Topsail Farm. Is there a motion to open the public hearing? So moved. Second. All in favor? Okay. There have been there is um, no reports from the police department of any issues at all. No, they, they, this is the first time I think of applying for a license themselves. They've always used caterer licenses to support their events, and now they want to get into it themselves. But there is Sarah's here. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. okay. But there's been no reports. No, none. None bad reports. No bad stuff. All wonderful <laughs> reports. It's a great place to have a. Thank you. Do you okay. want me to just say a couple of days? Or? Please. Okay. Have something if you would like. To say, we'd well, I just love to hear it. it's important. Um, well, I just wanted to thank you um, for considering this. Um, just two points quickly. One. Um, is that uh, this is not a change in business so this is happening on property currently just with other businesses who come um, so we're um, just looking to um, we would then be the only ones able to um, provide alcohol at events and that goes into the second point which is um, really one of the drivers for this for us is um, liability and maintaining sort of more controls um, on that um, for our events and on our property. So um, those are sort of the reasons. So the, the specific license is a on-premise catering with self-sponsored events. And you're applying for all three, the beer, the wine, and the liquor? Correct, yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Are there any questions or other comments? Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate your input. <coughs> Is there a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Public hearing is closed. Or do we have a motion to act on the liquor license? I'd move. Second. Good discussion. All in favor? Thank you. Well, we actually have Sarah here, though. Um, we don't often get you here, so. Um, I just want to tell you from um, a visitor to your establishment perspective and as the town manager, um, it's wonderful to see your business thriving. It is a beautiful business, well run. Um, the four events that I've been there um, have been absolutely beautiful. I was crushed that my son's and future daughter-in-law's date was taken <laughs> um, because that was my first choice. <coughs> Um, but it's just absolutely beautiful and you've just done such a beautiful job with it and thank you very much for locating your business in Walterboro. We very, very much appreciate it. Well, thank you. Um, we're, we wouldn't be here out. <laughs> so, we appreciate it. That's important. Thank you. Adjustments to the agenda? I believe there are three. One is to um, discuss EMS debt since 2012. Correct. We have to. You actually have to, to take, an take it. Action. Yep. That's based on auditor recommendations. Uh, Ten point three would be. And I, these will all be under new business. Ten point three. Eleven point three. Sorry. Or two. Where do I have ten? Correspondence is ten point three. EMS debt. Oh, sorry. It would, be, it would be 11. 11.2? 11.2, 11.3, and 11.4. Right, we're writing off EMS. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, 
And 11.3 would be um, to agree to have an executive session at the end of our regular meeting tonight to discuss uh, EMS issues under uh, Section 4056C. Well, it would be the billing contract. Yep. And that would, wouldn't that be 14.2? Uh, yes, sorry, thank you. Glad you're there. Good job. <laughs> that would be 14.2. And 11.3 uh, would then be to set the first meeting of the Budget Committee and the Select Board for a date in December. Okay. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? All second. Any discussion? All in favor? Thank you. Citizen comments? Okay, so then we'll move on. Select board comments. Katie? Yes. The Christmas tree has been delivered, and stay tuned for the lighting of the tree and ceremony to take place. No, uh, no, I was waiting for the date. Yeah. Well, I don't know yet. I oh, have, okay. to, I have oh. to get the tree lit first. Okay. That's the stay tuned part. Stay right? tuned. Stay okay. Tuned. okay. Stay tuned. Okay. <clears throat> I'd just like to say happy Thanksgiving to board members and Julie and the public. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Also, Same yeah. to you. Happy What time is dinner? Okay. I guess I have a few things I, to say. I, um, I did attend a meeting on the 18th of November at the Bug, Bug Tussle Annex at which we discussed 100% clean energy for MS-8040. And it was an interesting meeting. There's a, this, this is not from the top down. This is from the students, actually. They are expressing their wishes, and they've done a, a survey and a poll in the school to see how the kids feel about it. They want their schools in MS-8040 to be 100% clean energy. And um, what the mandate is to try to figure out a way to do that. So we had an interesting conversation. And this, is, this will be a matter of discussion, I think, over the coming months as this, I'll call it a movement. I think that's kind of what it is, uh, gain steam and ideas come forward as to how we might accomplish this. Is that Sarah's group? Um, it's Chris Ann. Chris Ann Baker actually. is doing it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so Julie and I, do you want to report on the meeting that we had? You can. No? Okay. We, we attended a meeting on Friday morning at the Miles Hospital at Schooner Cove facility, and I took three things away from it that I felt were really significant. One is, of course, that health care costs continue to rise and that affects the level of services that all health care people are able, able to offer. Um, two, as our health care system is currently structured, private sector insurance premiums and deductible payments are really important when it comes to paying health costs overall. Without those contributions from private insurance, the public insurance folks would be in dire trouble. Uh, and the third thing is that the hospital insurance fund, which is Medicare, Medicare Part A, and helps pay for inpatient hospital services, skilled nursing facilities, and home health services following hospital stays and hospice care, will be depleted in 2026 if Congress doesn't do something about it. So that's, that's what I took away from that meeting. Um, I do have an MRC update. The Municipal Review Committee met uh, last week. And I just want to um, bring a couple of things to your attention. Uh, Coastal Resources of Maine, which houses the solid waste processing facility in Hamden, the new one, has uh, <coughs> gotten two, one, one of the two certificates it needs to become fully uh, commercially operating. Uh, the first certificate was a performance test to measure and confirm the capacity and diversion capabilities of the solid waste recycling and processing facility in Hampton. And um, the first certificate confirms their ability to accept and process 1,200 tons of MSW over a three-day period. 
and this ability demonstrate enough processing capacity to handle all MSW from all Municipal Review Committee uh, joining members, one of which is Walterboro, Cushing and Friendship are also involved, of course. The second certificate of completion, when finalized, will certify that Coastal Resources has achieved the benchmark of diverting more than 50% of incoming acceptable waste into recovered materials and products. And they still have to get, they still have to demonstrate that the numbers I'm seeing is that they're well exceeding the 50% diversion rate, uh, but there are some operational glitches that still need to be dealt with for them to have a fully compliant test. Uh, just so you're aware, when they talk about diverting the MSW, what are they doing? Where, where does it get diverted to? Uh, they market build cardboard, metals, including aluminum ferrous, plastics one, two, three through seven, um, and they they market bulk scrap metal. This comes out of the stream that they process. They convert mixed paper and other cellulosic material into high quality biomass pulp to meet buyer specifications. And they convert plastic film into high quality fuel briquettes to meet buyer specifications. So basically our garbage is gonna be turned into these useful marketable products and won't be going to landfills. And of course, they also convert organic materials into biomethane on an ongoing basis. And that methane is used to power the plant. Um, so that's, that's an important milestone, that first certificate. We expect the second one to be forthcoming fairly shortly. And the, the, the transfer station committee apparently is now, we now have members for that committee. Well, they haven't been. They haven't been. Interview. interviewed. We have volunteers, on by the, nor have they submitted any applications. Well, they submit the applications to their own towns under the, okay. the solid, under our, our partnership agreement. And the management board also um, appoints the hauler. Um, but we do need uh, two, two people from Walderboro. I've been one of those people in the past. Um, I'd love to see two people come forward to take an active interest in the activities. Two of the issues the committee will be dealing with are uh, composting and a swap shop. So that's what I've got. Thank you. Town Manager's report. I have just one little item. Um, we've been approached to lease a small pond that um, the town owns um, for bait fish. Um, and before we do that, I thought it would be a good idea uh, to, see, to find out its viability before we actually do that. It's very similar to what we did with the blueberry field in mm -hmm. my research. Right. Um, so what I'd like to do, and I will disclose that it is Mr. Simmons, um, it was brought up uh, by John Daigle, um, similar to what we did with the blueberry fields. It is not used. It's part of the water utility property. Um, it is a town-owned piece, um, but I think that there were questions about how deep, and um, I went through the records and found out all, absolutely nothing about it, to be honest with you. <laughs> um, it's just, it was used as a source at one time. It would never be used as a source now, um, but I didn't know how you would feel about at least letting him go look at it and see how deep it is and if it's a potential um, something we could lease um, since we have somebody willing to lease from us mm -hmm. and give us a dollar or so. Um, per fish? Well. <laughs> sold. I sold, sold every one of them. <laughs> um, but it's similar to what we do. And that brought up the fact that there was no tickler file on when the blueberry lease is up. Wow. So and I found that up. We yeah. have to we have to deal with that next year. Yeah, Madame might have that information. They oh, might, sorry. but I'm Mid Coast Conservancy, Mid -Coast Conservancy yeah. might, but that's one of those mm -hmm. things that might because the lease is with us. Right. For the town. Not with the MBLT. No, no, but they're the they're the operator of the lease as far as I understand. Correct. Yeah. So that was a little bit I didn't know about that part of it. Um, I thought MBLT would just uh, Mid Coast Conservancy would handle that. So um, I just wanted your approval to allow um, Mr. Simmons to um, at least look at the pond, see how deep it is, see if it's a viable um, before he gave us money to do such a thing or before anything happened yeah. with it. Why don't we put a motion together and, and then have a discussion on the issue and then vote on it if that's okay with everybody. 
Okay. So is there a motion to um, allow Captain Simmons to explore the possibility of using the pond located in our water utility district? Correct. It's right off of Depot Street. For the purpose of raising fish. Yeah. We didn't know it was there until we well. Well, I think it's to see if there's fishies in it. Some will <laughs> yeah, exactly. and whether they can survive it. Yeah, there is a there is a, a motion. Uh, it's been moved. Is there a second? Uh, I'll second. second. You second for discussion, okay. I guess. Okay. Yeah, discussion. Yeah. I don't think he's going to be raising fish in it. No. Okay. No. <laughs> what is what is your purpose in doing that? In looking at the see if the, see if I can hold hold fish there. If you can hold them, right. just like in a... Right, in pens and stuff. Yeah, like okay. Yeah. But um, we don't we even know how deep it right. is. We didn't even know it existed until we started going through the water yeah. water utility district um, um, properties that the town owns mm -hmm. and stuff like that, whether we were going to get rid of them or not. And we get discussing it and found out there was a pond there. Does it have a name? No, it's not very big. It's called Water Pond One. There you go. <laughs> Number one. <laughs> So, and the, the property's almost worth nothing because it's, it's not a, it's not a buildable lot. It's a, it's assessed at a thousand dollars. And so you're looking to check out the pond, see if it's viable right. for you to to hold right. yep. some. Yep. And then if we were to if you were to proceed, there'd be something at a, a another meeting. Mm -hmm. But there's no real way we should. I didn't want to just say yeah, go look at it. I wanted. Mm -hmm. The select board too, uh -huh. and then you want to kind of rent it, mm -hmm. yeah. just like the blueberry. It would be exactly almost like the yeah. blueberry field where you're leasing it. Yep. The, the quarry hill. The yes. Blueberry field. Mm -hmm. Okay, we get money from that. We, we do. do. We get money from him. That. Trust yeah. me, we get money from oh, him yeah. too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the conservation district gets money from that also. Mm -hmm. that's, how, that's how they're. Yeah, we can look at that lease. And maybe use it as a model if this. Mm -hmm. Proves viable. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I charge more than the blueberry fields do. <laughs> it's only four hundred dollars for the blueberry field. Is that what it is? Yeah, for a ten-year lease. Wow. Hmm. Hmm. That's pretty reasonable. <laughs> Very reasonable. Sorry, I'm gonna have to. We're gonna have to charge him more. <laughs> well, that, that was a long time ago, and the prices were. You know, now that now that things are up, it'll cost you a little more. You've been gambling at that time. Mm -hmm. Is that your poker time? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Is there any further comment or discussion on this motion that we have on the floor? We'll vote. All in favor? Note that Abdin is abstaining. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. You're uh, welcome. Consent calendar. I'd, I'd like to factor one of the issues out of the consent calendar because I think it requires a motion for us to authorize Julie to arrange the permit. Wagner Bridge. Uh, or Wagner Bridge, number two bridge. Now, which one is this? For the Wagner Bridge Road. Is it house. on Wagner Bridge, or is it just right 10 down? 10.31. Yep. Down, right down the street. Yep. From okay. I was wondering why that wasn't worked on this year. Wagner number two bridge. Yep. So, I would, I guess I'd request that in the consent calendar motion, we approve 9192 and 94. And vote on those first, and then agree that to handle nine three as a separate issue. You're talking me ten, talking ten. 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 ten, ten, ten. Why is my thing? I don't know. Down? You're all over the place. You're all over the world. This is the one that she sent to me by email. It's the word version. I don't know. Okay. Well, there, I guess there's been some things added, and they haven't been remembered. My apologies. So it'll be ten point three that we segregate. And uh, vote to approve 10 1, 10 2, and 10 4. Is there a motion to approve 10 9 2, 9, 10 1, 10 2, and 10 4? So Can we just have her talk about it first and approve it all? We can do that if you wish. That would make more sense. Okay, I'm happy to do that. I take back one more. Right. Thank you, Katie. Sure. Thanks again. So, I guess the recommendation is that we authorize Julie to go ahead and arrange this. See, my only concern was, was about the bond. We are allowed under the terms of the permit to require a bond. Uh, it depends on who the contractor is and how much 
experience they have and whether they're going to honor chewing up the road and fixing what they chew up. Um, so I, I, I think we should leave that to Julie. To well, decide. we actually happen to have our engineer here tonight. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's what I thought. Well, let's have him tell us what's going on. Well, I don't think it's something that he's, uh, other than we could get the amount of the bond, I, we could ask you to give us some guidance on the amount of the bond. It's a state project to repair Wagner Bridge Road. Mm -hmm. They're going to be going over our municipal roadways with overweight vehicles. Yeah. And is the total uh, contract amount that's going to be secured with one contractor in excess of $125,000? I imagine it will be. So then you're obliged to require uh, the full cost of the project to be um, uh, backed up with a performance and payment bond. Right there. There we go. There we go. Okay, that is a bit different from the suggestions offered in the information to the attachment that well, the, the state sent us. The I like what you're saying. The now. state would not want to increase the cost of the project with a bond. Right. What has your experience been with this when it's a state project on a municipal road? Uh, if you were to look uh, specifically, it's their contract language. It, it would always be a bond. Um, and if we advise a town, aside from the threshold where you're obliged to under statute, which is 125K, so it really takes it right out of your hands, generally speaking, uh, res responsive, responsible contractor pays about 2 2.5% for their bond, so you end up buying it with a little markup from about that amount, uh, generally speaking. Uh, it's a reasonable thing to invest in as a, as a responsible um, town body. And after the $125,000 uh, standard in the statute, you really don't have any choices. Okay. Unless they're advising they've got a get out of jail free card for you, it's not a discussion that Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? I still think we got to leave it up to Julie to make that decision. Well, I'll confirm. Yeah. All right. It's fine. Mm -hmm. So, is there a motion on the consent calendar? So moved. I'll second it. Any further discussion? All in favor? Okay. <clears throat> Number 11, new business. This is a contract for the closure of our um, the CCD landfill, which is the construction. What does the CCD stand for? Construction and demolition. Construction and demolition um, landfill that is up at our transfer station. Um, it's been coming. We've known that for years. Uh, Pine Tree has been the engineering firm that we've used. They actually do have some plans. Um, for this already, um, and their fee for this is uh, lump sum for $25,200. Um, Bob Prue was out, met with John Daigle and myself, um, and Linda Butler um, from the DEP, um, and I would recommend, and so does John, that we um, award the contract to Pine Tree. So moved. I second it. Any further discussion? about the related deal? No, sir. <laughs> Not as far as I know. She made that very clear that he stole her email address. She did. Did I? Yes. <laughs> it was very funny. It was it was a wow. funny conversation. She didn't tell me that. Yes. You stole her, I guess you you stole her email address that she wanted. And then nothing. Very funny. I apologize up front, but it yeah. is what it is. You know? you know, we need everything, all the goodwill we can get from the DEP. You didn't really help us. That didn't help you. All in favor? Okay. Uh, the second item on new business is uh, regarding the write off of EMS debt since 2012. If you will recall, when our auditors visited, um, Ron sat in that front row, went over our financial standing, and there is a book entry that we carry for outstanding debt from the emergency services. Um, and he suggested that we needed to write that off. Um, the auditors visited us for our preliminary audit. Um, they're just finalizing 2018, and we were reminded that we should write off um, that outstanding. 
and the, this is the balance that exists on the books that we did not collect. And this goes back to, all the way back to the beginning of 2012 till now, and that amount would be $525,779.81. We don't really, I mean, it's, it's good practice, and why it went so long, I can't speak to that, but what I can speak to is that every year we should be doing that and reviewing it. So. I, my only comment is the sad thing is if you look through that list of receivables that go back to that period of time, a lot of these people are from out of state, California, other states, that got the help and assistance from our department, right. were billed and then basically walked away. Walked yeah. away. So, so. Uh, yeah, I hope moving forward we can be a little more. Well, I think that we, we have, um, I think there was some question about policy um, and um, you have to go after them and then you have to, and if you do it for one under Medicare rules, you do it for all. Mm -hmm. So even if um, they're a Walterboro resident and you're going to send them to collections, you're going to send them to collections. The policy, though, that was adopted in 2012, and I think, Clint, you were the only one that was here um, on the select board at that time, um, did stipulate for those in need that we could use the Philbrook Fund to, mm -hmm. to pay for those um, charges. If well, the needed. big discussion was what, what if I don't have no type of insurance and you know, am I going to lose my house or blah, blah, blah. I mean, people went on and on. It was quite a emotional thing right yeah. yeah but I think that the policy was very thoughtful um, and and um, we do have to speak about Comstar's contract in executive so um, I can go over that more in that discussion for the contract part of it but um, the write-off is just it's a bookkeeping <coughs> entry um, it's not like it's going to affect our fund balance it's just been sitting out there as an accounts receivable okay. amount now it's gone now it's gone Sad, huh? It is sad, money? but I think that um, we, we, we chose an end date um, <coughs> of um, technically um, February of 2018 because we do think that there is um, ways to recoup some of the existing list uh -huh. by actually sending more letters and then sending people uh -huh. to collections. And as Bob said, I you know there is there is. Um, a 77% is not collected from all others in a one-year period. So, and that's from people outside of Waldeboro and outside of our service area. So, we need to. I guess they just must that. figure they can, they can run. I think so. We it's like a parking any. ticket in yes. another right. state. Exactly. Parking ticket in another state. Like a scoff law. So. Yeah. So, is there a motion? So more. Is there a second? A second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Okay, 11 3, uh, to set a meeting for the first budget, first budget committee and select board meeting. And I think you're suggesting December 17th. I'd like it to be on December 17th, just a quick meeting, no more than an hour, just to get everybody together in the room, give them your, give them the, go over the calendar with everybody to make sure that the select board and the budget committee is agreeable with the calendar. Just so you know, budgets are due back from the department heads December 30th. They were a little upset about that. I didn't make it a little into January. My problem is, is if I don't set a date, mm -hmm. then they go over and then we're right up against the, the meeting dates and Peg and I run around like chickens with our heads off. So they've been doing it. The department heads have been doing this for a long time. They know yep. what they're doing. You. So, you know, they have... They now have the ability at their fingertips to have three to four years of budget history, so they should know um, how to go. And my goal is to have the budget done by the end of February. Is it is it possible to to start a regular select board meeting an hour early and have them in? Um, well, this will be a special meeting, isn't it? Well, you could do it the same <coughs> night as the That's select board saying, meeting. If you wanted to start early or late, but yeah. the budget committee people work, the volunteers that are on the budget committee, most of them work till five. That was the issue. So maybe if we wanted to start the select board meeting at five and then start the budget yes, committee I, meeting I mean, at six, that might be better. What's the date on that? Tenth. That would be the tenth. Tenth. It's a good idea, Clint. Oh. But I wouldn't start the budget committee till six so that okay. the people who. We start our board meeting at five. 
Everyone good with that? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Okay. We will advertise. I sense a consensus. I don't think we need to vote. No. Twelve. Twelve point one. Uh, concerns uh, of water committee me? recommendations. Don't we Sorry. have one more? No. Uh, that went down to fourteen. So fourteen. Sorry, that was so the under discussion. Okay. Sorry. No, no problem. <laughs> that makes two of us. Katie. <laughs> um, Water Committee recommendation. The Water Committee voted to recommend to the Select Board that, the Waldebor that Waldeboro maintain ownership of the Water Department and establish a five-member standing committee that will meet and work with the Water Company to manage the district. The standing committee should have at least two rate payers and become active after the Select Board completes negotiations with Maine Water to renew the existing contract. Uh, the standing committee would be formed after the current water committee committee completes its work of recommending a revised contract with Maine Water, and it would not have a select board member on it. It would be independent of the board committee. Is there a, is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion on this? And that was their recommendation. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. It was a great committee, I have to say, as far as. Um, um, committees a subcommittee um, goes like that we really I think the select board did a good job of, of choosing people who had knowledge from prior prior water um, committee mm -hmm. that worked on the contract originally. actually yeah. the original contract um, Delia was wonderful um, um, Arvin mm -hmm. and we had Mike Mike Thayer, Mike Thayer who is a his email is sludgy, so he really <laughs> he, he, wastewater and water are his thing. Um, but it really was good, and it gave me because, as you know, I was I was very much not real thrilled with the whole idea of us being in charge of that. But they are so thoughtful, and I feel like we have an expert right on the panel. Um, it it went really well, um, and they thoroughly looked at they looked at all the options. Um, and I think, aside from that being the recommendation, their thought was keeping control of that utility and being able to um, make sure that the select board retains control of the rates was very important for the rate, you know, for them. That um, the rate payers, our residents, are the number one concern. Um, not that we'll change our relationship really with Maine Water, but they also um, are going to help and make recommendations to the select board about what that contract should look like. So I thought that was a really good committee. Yeah. Okay. I think we have a, a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Okay. Thank you. Dutch, Me Dutch Neck Marine Park. I had to move your one panel. I'm sorry. Oh, no. I, I can not am I, am, Max, am I out of the way here? Um, you're fine. Okay. Yeah, Max, do you want to say anything prefacing? prefacing? Uh, just before Bill starts, I'll say, first of all, I love the cooperation with Carly and Dorsky and just doing this in a very timely fashion. Um, the plans you see, I initially looked at the first, I think you had five plans, if I'm correct. Uh, I looked at them, and there were two that I thought could have immediately been off the table since compared to what we were looking for. There were two that just wouldn't have fit that idea. Uh, and then I had them reviewed by Julie, the Johnny Daigle, uh, Glenn Melvin, and Elaine Abel, just to get some, di and um, Justin, our shellfish warden, just to get some different perspectives on this. Uh, throughout these plans, the only thing that really changes is the what's called commercial priority parking, where we're planning to have five to eight spots specifically for just commercial use. Uh, everything else, the size of the ramp, um, general general slash overflow parking, uh, the recreational pier, all that's going to be very consistent throughout. So the only item, well, and the entrance, I forgot that. So what I'm hoping to get from the select board tonight is an idea of 
what plans we want looking forward to the future. This is not next year. This is probably five, ten years down the line. But when we're applying for grants, what's the vision we want for Dutch Next? So I'll give it to Bill unless anyone has questions before going in. You'll be able to pick me up all right if I wander between here. Oh, and yeah. There. Yep, go ahead. Well, good evening. I'm Bill Lane from Rutland Dorsky Engineering and Surveying. I appreciate the opportunity to work with the town again. And uh, we're uh, presenting um, three design iterations for parking in a configuration of the intersection of Dutch Neck Road for uh, that drive uh, based on public information from the July 22nd uh, public input meeting uh, where we received comments from at least 12 people and probably the room was about 25 folks uh, in attendance so there was a good amount of interest some disparate points of views, but uh, really some design input that we could uh, put together and, and take away as one set of information. Uh, subsequent to the meeting, our surveyor, Dusty Starr, uh, was out to the site, picked up uh, site information uh, starting at Dutch Neck Road in that intersection all the way in through the access drive, and uh, put that together on one base map. Uh, and there's two detailed sheets of his that are available as well if anybody's interested in, in reviewing the base mapping for it as well, and as you're all more familiar with the facility than I am, uh, I won't belabor the fact that we have one access drive in, uh, uh, which uh, appears to adequately serve other than its existing condition. Uh, it begins its life as a paved road, which is in tough, tough shape, and then transitions over to a graveled road, and through the uh, uh, ramp area there is a uh, an established available circular uh, route for people to launch trailers and recover them um, and then utilize a remote parking area to the south. Uh, there are a number of discrete uh, casual or informal parking areas and trailer spots that folks have uh, been uh, using over time and those are trying tried to be represented on the map. Um, and bringing a little bit of order to that has been part of the instruction. The primary concerns, though, were about turning radii and the availability of uh, improvements to make that work. Folks coming up from the south along Dutch Neck Road are really having a hard time getting a, a truck and a trailer into the intersection. There is uh, one commercial operation that does remove seaweed uh, that uses an over-the-road trailer. Uh, at this location on occasion, and uh, they find it's very hard to maneuver, particularly if people haven't uh, uh, parked very effectively. Um, so with those uh, design improvements in mind, the synthesis was make the ramp larger, uh, improve parking, improve circulation, and fix the access drive, and get the intersection to work several takeaways, and we prepared, uh, as I related, five base maps, uh, really essentially uh, about variations at the um, uh, parking area, uh, reorienting the commercial and the uh, uh, private car parking areas uh, to different effect, and we're now narrowed down to three iterations. Um, and. I'm stream of consciousness as a speaker, so if you want to jump in and ask a question, please feel free to do so. Um, and uh, beginning with the intersection at uh, Dutch Neck Road, we prepared a couple of iterations, both of which are configured so that we can take a tractor trailer from the north in and out of the facility and a car and boat trailer combination in and out from either direction without. Um, uh, belaboring the point, I don't know if it's easy for you folks to see, if I can just rotate it a little bit too much for everybody else in the audience. Um, to maintain the existing alignment out to the road, we do have a fairly dramatic sweep at the end of the road. We're approaching not square on to the road very well, and we end up with a more substantial amount of pavement in order to be able to accommodate all those vehicular movements. If we were to take the road, the travel way itself, and uh, take it off the existing alignment, swing it out south, 
and come into Broadmoor Square, uh, we end up with a smaller uh, footprint of pavement, but obviously it's a larger capital project in order to correct that. But we would prefer to see a public facility have as close to a 90 degree intersection with, a, with the travel way of a road uh, that it fronts on, if possible. But um, the, those are both viable options. And what I would suggest going forward is, uh, depending on how the funds are procured, there may be more of a safety angle to play up, and this would be the iteration. Or if it were just part of a base mapping, there might be a base bid and a bid alternate, depending on whether funding would actually support uh, those modifications. Question, if I may, um, on the second iteration where you actually bring the, the entryway down south more to create more of a, a straight <coughs> approach to the, to the road, you're going to create more space in that in that loopy area there. Mm -hmm. Could that be uh, used as a buffer to um, perhaps disguise a little better the the park from the, the neighbors? Uh, sure. Uh, I mean, I think in, in general, you know, with once we're off this alignment, uh, I'm not sure that from the intersection there's very much of a uh, of an experience of the park when you're standing on the road. But you know, it would be it would be changing. You can't it even see right it. in there. So <laughs> it's a hike. Probably a change. It would probably you wouldn't can. be the driver, but certainly this area once once it's reclaimed could yeah. be planted out. Okay. Yeah, but you sure. can't even see the entrance when you come up to it. You have to, you put your boat in? Well, in its, in its current form, you're right. It's yeah, you can't even, I mean, with the, when the yeah. sign was down, I drove by it yeah. numerous times. Right, so then again, you know, there again, well, there's, there's the tell. whole parcel mm -hmm. that the town owns, and that's what the drive does before it gets to the turning circle. Um, so uh, probably not a prime driver of, of opting for the straightened alignment, but you, you certainly have the opportunity once this road is realigned, that this could be planted in. Um, so, anybody mind if I moved on to uh, options at the intersection? Let me see if I can pull up option B and option A, and I think we're going to spend the least amount of time on them. Um, so, generally, broadly speaking, uh, we're talking about uh, configurations that try to use as much of the existing gravel as, as is possible. Um, and adding gravel, largely uh, the considerations are the amount of trees that we're removing and the net benefit of that. Um, so starting with this option, um, we would be taking the trailer parking and we could probably uh, uh, fit in something on the order of six to eight uh, trailer spaces. It's mapped out at the present uh, with uh, an edge of gravel that's probably too close to the shore in that bank on the north side. Um, and we're expecting that you'll want to move on from this, but with throwing iterations out and you know, for most vehicles with a trailer, the forward progression has come around the loop, back down, uh, and then pull it to a slot and then come right down and recover a boat. Um, uh, the uh, iterations that follow will kind of follow on to taking the trailer spaces and moving them in spots. Uh, so we'll move on to uh, B, I believe, fairly quickly. But uh, just so that folks have a sense of what we're looking at is we are increasing the radius of the central turning area and all the iterations, and that's for um, all the vehicular movements, but we've certainly tracked it for a tractor trailer coming down through, which is the current condition. And, um, uh, it would, in order to affect uh, something that meets the current standards for turning radii for the trucks, it does give you, you know, a reduction in the, the footprint of that central island. Uh, so with that theme in mind, um, uh, this is, uh, again, approximately the same 20 uh, passenger car parking spaces in pretty much the gravel yard area that exists now. Um, and then moving off into the woods line um, to the west outside the loop for trailer spaces. So again, it's 
uh, forward motion to launch um, and pull into a trailer space and then pull back out and then come around and launch. So there's a little more um, uh, separation from those spaces from any kind of uh, grading limitation. Um, that is a tree line that is heavily wooded at present and the iterations there um, are fairly reliably eight spaces. Um, and they're, I think we've got them all dimensions in, in the order of a good 60 foot space every time we're doing it. Um, and then moving on to the third iteration, um, this is utilizing that central island a little bit more so they're more directly accessed um, and more in sync with the way that that central island is presently used, which is more directly formalized. We kind of took the alignment of the existing uh, space that is quite obviously used and added spaces adjacent to it. Uh, the downside of this is this is more tree removal in that central island. Um, and so <clears throat> you would be using the island for spaces as well? Yeah. Okay. Because that, that probably does six to eight now, probably. Yeah. yeah. So uh, in formalizing them, and I think I expressed this to the yeah. uh, public meeting, when you lay out spaces that meet, conform to current standards, you really don't pick anything up. You use the same square footage. Right. And folks have been very clever in how they can get in and out of spots, and you start to lay them out uh, with full dimensions on them, and you get the same net, of, net effect. So we're probably still, again, talking about six spaces or seven spaces in this instance. Um, so probably not really picking up any more spaces than are presently available now. Um, so we so wouldn't have to come extra early to get that special spot. They're all the same. I, I figured that was <laughs> that was open to a select few folks to, having a particular discussion about how that spot would be used. Yeah. Um, and uh, the uh, consensus of uh, discussions with with Max is that uh, uh, kind of contrary to the public input, uh, that dividing up the ramp space with uh, a float would probably be not as effective or not as preferred. Uh, so what we would be looking to do is just simply straightforward, increasing its overall width to 30 feet and extending it to the, ex the same limits as it presently runs. It, it does extend now approximately two feet below low tide. And so we'd be using that as um, uh, the limitation. Uh, it's currently fairly well pitched right now when we'd be replicating that with approximately a 12%, 12 and a half percent uh, slope on, uh, on the plank ramp. Uh, but from the point where we would transition to uh, the existing highest angle tide line down uh, seaward, we would be transitioning over to uh, precast concrete planks. Um, the paving is no longer an option in there, so the other alternative would be cast in place slab which was pushed into place. You'll, you'll see that in um, some jurisdictions and marketplaces. We just haven't seen that really carried forward and implemented here. So the precast plank seems to be the paradigm. It allows us to have the uh, <coughs> amount of time uh, pass after casting so for them to cure so that there's not that much material uh, chloride leaching into the the water and you know obviously don't have the um, uh, paving below tide and having tide come back up uh, in environmental issues so that's a permanent option rather than um, prior treatments where paving would go into the water um, and then the third item that or I'm not sure about third item but uh, one identified item was that uh, hand carried boats are used here with some frequency and that uh, while it's very convenient for the folks that do hand carry to use the ramp, that it is not conducive with all the other ramp traffic. So an alternative configuration 
for hand-carried boats uh, was depicted. We picked out an alignment for a basic stone uh, treatment um, to work its way, pretty much a straight alignment through the rocks to the north, and uh, that's almost um, to the mid-tide line. So that's a... Uh, you have to build that up quite a bit, wouldn't you? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure we would, we'd be trying to get it up very much. We're just oh, trying okay. to get it uniform yeah. uh, from one side to the other. But I'm not sure that we're trying to establish one you know, constant slope or anything along those lines compared to something that... It's just something that would be um, uh, a stone base that could be walked on while it was inundated Somebody could walk out a little bit further, um, but get them out of the mud. Um, uh, but uh, configurations to the south and iterations this way did not look promising, so we're not recommending that. But off to the north, it does seem to be an opportunity to divert out the hand carry traffic to a, a separate, de dedicated small stone ramp. Um, Question? Certainly. Uh, in iterations two and three, you did not mention decreasing the radius of the northeast lobe of the central uh, green island, treat island, is quite distinct from the one behind your left elbow and mm -hmm. this one. Why is that? The, 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 tra the trailer traffic needs to make that turn regardless. Um, in this iteration, we're, we're shifting away so that we can create some space for these um, uh, trailer spaces. Um, and in these iterations, we didn't need to do that. So there's an adequate circulation radii for the track to trailer. Right. That was my only question. Yeah. So we have choices. Yeah. Max, did you want to weigh in on the choices? Yeah. I'll Old just, planner. Yeah, I'll just quickly say um, when I spoke with uh, the Johnny Daigle, Julie, Glenn, and Elaine, the sense I sort of had was that that first one that Bill has that's on his left, that seems to be the one we definitely do not want to do since that's going to be less than 25 feet from the shoreline, if I'm correct. Yes. So that's going to be a massive work challenge and permitting challenge. Yeah. Yeah. I don't there's think there's enough room. I'm surprised there's even enough room to do it. Right. It's, it's an earthwork issue. I mean, we're, we're in, essentially we're building a wall. Right. So that took that one out. And so for the other two, it comes down to a matter of whether we want to embrace what the island is right now, where people are parking on it, or if we want to try and enforce turning it back into the original iteration that we wanted of more recreation and uh, picnic tables, things like that, so that uh, the parking can be over there where the... Uh, I think the bathroom used to be, where you have Doug Well on there. Yep. Yeah. So that's the sort of two I've been getting back. It's a matter of how much we're going to be enforcing rules at Dutch Neck, is what I've been getting. It's a working waterfront. Yep. I mean, I think the most people that use it, it's a working waterfront. We're a working waterfront town and community. To me, I, I think the parking should be closer to the ramp. So you're saying, at C? There, the I like that one. Usual, that one usual. that's in the island. Right. I mean, that's who parks there. It's the clamors. It's the guys that lobster down there. The guys that lobster. It's it's the seaweed harvesters. I I I, I just think that there is some recreation there, um, but. I don't want to, I can tell you from our experience with Pine Street Landing, um, by and large, any complaint I've gotten has always been from the commercial fishermen and not from recreational users. How many people putting their boats into the, into the water or pulling out of the water at the same time? How skilled are they? <laughs> That's one. <laughs> Number two is, are there, is there room for two yes, on that ramp? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Or more? Yes, because um, at the town landing, you can <laughs> do it really easily. 
it's 30 feet wide. Um, confident trailer operators and commercial guys, I think, probably will be down there three wide um, at the right moment. Uh, there is, and then there's guys like me who come along and I need, I need 15 feet. Um, I'm not afraid to hit both sides. Um, so uh, there was discussion, and the, one of the things that is forward looking uh, about providing that much space is uh, that um, some suggested or recommended signage is likely to be um, uh, part of the public input process where they're going to recommend that um, uh, the majority of the lion's share of the ramp space be uh, deferentially provided to commercial fishermen, certainly at the right points in the tide where folks want to be on it at, at all at the same time. Um, so that's sort of not quite wayfinding signage, but some manner of public educational signage that needs to be conceived of. The other that. thing is I did speak with a, a person who hauls large boats mm -hmm. um, who puts in it Pine Street right now, and that would be the turning radius improvements would be significant for la launching those large boats that might not want to deal with the channel issues in Pine Street Landing. Mm -hmm. Seth's got a question. Uh, I would just have to add the observation of my time on the uh, Conservation Committee. You may remember that with working with Johnny Daniel, we sort of laid out some map, uh, some trails through this area, and it seemed at the time to make sense to put picnic tables, I think there is, still is one, down in the far southeast corner, yep. and then there's one up, you can't see it, up, up on the left there, uh, aesthetically nicer, and it has the added advantage of leaving the commercial traffic and the, the aesthetic traffic, if you will, the tourist traffic or whatever, Divided. quite well separated. You just don't get in each other's way. And you need trash and stuff for the commercial people anyway. You don't want to sit next to a trash barrel, probably to a fishing detritus while you're eating lunch. So it makes sense to do it, I would think, in the middle. For, for recreational users on the south parking lot, uh, how many spaces do you have there? Uh, those are 20. 20 spaces? How yeah. likely is it that we're going to need 20 spaces? <laughs> no, 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 I would think so. I'm wondering whether or not for recreational users you could create a few spaces that are long enough to accommodate a vehicle and a trailer that someone parks there and doesn't get into the commercial space. It's, so it's a potential that the, the issue that we kind of came across in that was some of the first iterations that I showed uh, Max is getting in and out of a trailer length space. Mm -hmm. Pick up truck and a, and a boat that's likely to be launched here is going to end up being 40 feet long where you got to be able to have you know, 25, 30 feet to the right of it and then you have the length of the space and then you have to have something like 20, 25 feet coming back out of it. So it's wider than this more or less 60 foot program. If you got that rid of the if you got rid of the parking on the left of that appendage yep. and just had parking facing the water, mm -hmm. would you then have enough room to maneuver a trailer and a truck? Well we get them in and it would depend on uh, You're I, not I gonna get them backed we, out well. We we have to you know have them either single stacked um, and backing back out into the travel way or turning it loose and letting folks find creative ways to put their recreational trailer down there. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure that the town would have an envision <laughs> right. to say that those were, uh, other than trailer spaces. They're trailer spaces, they're not just commercial spaces. Right, I get that. But yes, I, I, this 20 spaces is more than I would expect you would need, uh, even if you enhanced the trail building and added picnic spaces. It's just as the piece of gravel that you've got. You so I can build it smaller. Yeah, probably 10 would be plenty. I don't think I've seen ever seen two or three when I've been down there. It's probably become a burgeoning recreational. Yeah, but I mean, Party spot. like I said, you normally don't like if you see two or three mm -hmm. that vast. So if you had ten, like ten spaces, I mean, that's more than. Yeah. Well, I, again, I didn't, I didn't reduce the size of gravel that you've got out there now. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's nope, the but I didn't know about possibly there. increasing it to help with that. Right. Because I mean, I, I, it's. I just can't visualize a, a, a good way to get additional trailer spots in there um, 
without thinking about how they're going to maneuver and if they pull in. It'd be a surprise. Two here. <laughs> the only one. And then uh, beyond that, they, they'll start to really rather um, scrape fenders on stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And is there room up there for those canoe and kayak people to stop a car and unload? Uh, with without being in anyone's way. Well, yeah. With the existing bit of gravel that we've got here, you can see that you know the, the travel path is is still leaves us a little room off to one side. Mm -hmm. So there could be a dedicated spot that's called an unloading, mm -hmm. no parking designated spot. Um, so that's pretty far from the parking lot to yeah. lug something. Well, yeah. I mean, I guess it depends. Most people back down on the ramp anyways in the load. Yeah. But you're not putting it on the load. Look, it's over. Yeah, they're, they're, the they're, they're moving that. Yeah, but the objective of the public in, uh, input was that, if at all possible, give them no reason at all to be sitting on the ramp with a vehicle just right. unloaded. But that's what they right. do now. Kayak, right? Right, they're trying to improve that. Yeah. Yeah. So there could be a designated spot up in this environment for that purpose to call it an unloading. Well, we have one there now. It's just, you know, it's whatever. First come, first serve. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, what's the straw poll of the select board? I, I would suggest reducing the number of spaces on that lower part where the where non-commercial people are intended to park, and see if one can give a lot enough room for two or three vehicles with trailers on the back to to pull in facing the water, back out, and go down and load or unload a boat down at that ramp. Either that or just leave it as a commercial facility and just say it's close to non commercial use. Well, they said they're not, those in the island are not no. commercial parking lots. The yeah. ones in the island they're are trailers. Commercial. They are commercial. Where are the trailer well, space? Yeah. Right. They're trailer spaces. Yeah, but I mean, if you come in with a, a boat, right. it's on a trailer. And you may not be, you may be going out for recreational use. That's the issue. I mean, if right, got, that's what. If you have eight climbers who well, need to park their vehicles there. And but their aren't you just there. going to park where you can? At some point, you're just going to park where those, I mean, he has those, those spaces aren't going to be necessary. Right. You're going to park. I can tell you, if I pulled in there and every spot was taken, I'd just scooch over there, but I can back up a trailer. Yeah, you know. So, so yeah, I or, think that's over. That's also overflow parking as well. Yeah, it's overflow. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I, I think. I think. You know, to your point, that, you know, this could be reallocated. And if, and if you stop drawing the lines this way, uh, and do a couple of parallel lines this way to that depth on both sides, you would end up with like four spaces. No. That would be just perfectly <laughs> adequate for trailers. Um, and if folks <coughs> exercise some diligence, they wouldn't hit anything coming in and out of them. Um, and if they didn't exercise any diligence, they'd hit something. But, um, User take caution. Is there a plan for picnic tables if one wants to go down and hike and picnic? Uh, there are some tables there now. There's already um, there's right, but I mean, at least two nice down here. Um, it, depending on the scope of the project that the town wants to undertake, um, the initial direction was really about the ramp yeah. um, the infrastructure and yeah. the infrastructure of the facility. So uh, you know, the siting and location of the um, uh, picnic tables. Um, we can just do to whatever. The, the wayfinding thing. Happy to you know depict uh, and get direction on that from whatever committees might be interested. In. How many um, clamors are down there during a tide? How many? Uh, Trailers are parked, usually. It all depends on if the upper river is closed or not. Yeah. If they go to back river or go to flat. On a good day, on a good day, how many is down there? On a good day, there'll be eight or ten. But if it's clam, if the if there's any amount of clams up in the back river, a lot of guys will launch out of the Dutch neck. A lot shorter to run. Mm -hmm. So good seen. You could have twenty guys down there. You know, if the river's producing good in the lower end. But typically, you know, you'll see six or eight, ten maybe. That's all. Okay. Yeah. I've been down there when there have been cars. 
helter skelter. You know, you get down towards there and there, every which way. It's they still to... are, really. Huh? They still are. They're all over the place. <laughs> well, yeah. I, like I say, it's all. Rest I took press someone down, down to say how people show them make, how lovely it was. People just make it their wasn't. own whatever. <laughs> you know. well, well, there might be a little bit more. Clean up. Plan to the chaos. How about tidy. That? Tidy it up. So, so does everybody like that one? Yeah. I, I just have one more question. In the island part, what else is in there besides the parking area? Nothing. Nothing. Uh, well, I mean, there is an opportunity. Give or take a um, few trees. There, um, there's a substantial amount of trees there now. Yeah. Um, this would this would take out some trees, um, but there is also an availability uh, adjacent on the north side of the parking uh, island, still within the within the circle. Um, there could be an opportunity to set the toilet um, and have a trash barrel and some wayfinding signage and that's probably readily accomplishable in that island either on the north side of it or on the west side of it well the reason why i was asking is is there room to put two more spaces in there for trucks trailers there's a prospect for at least one more to the south um, and you know the Decision making about how to stop drawing that is directed towards not taking every tree, um, and then how convenient it is to get in and out from the ramp to that southernmost um, space. But one more certainly could be added. Uh, it would just be probably the least utilized, and then that's that many more trees that would probably have to come out. But, um, well, there's that many clamors down there mm -hmm. that have a truck and a trailer. I mean, a, a, yeah. yeah. You're right. One, one or two more spaces in there, I would think, to accommodate them mm -hmm. would be better. Yeah. Option C with it, more spaces. Now, in these plans, are you considering tarring it, or is it going to be gravel? I think it's... I think those plans are still just staying as gravel, if I'm correct, Bill. Uh, that is, at this point, yeah, um, recycling the pavement that's there uh, into the into the gravel for the uh, long uh, existing drive, grading it out with reclaim or a gravel and driving a good crown into it, um, and then graveling around that intersection. And if there's, uh, did not get a sense that there was an extreme abundance of funds to... Um, well, we were going to pave the road in. Okay. We have the money for that, I believe. Yeah, they, you guys approved that. Mm -hmm. All the way in and around the circle? And Not around the circle. I think just we had the road in. And the parking. Not the parking, just the road in. You can check with John on that. But I believe we did that. It was put in the budget. Because we were doing Dutch Neck Road and Gross Neck Road anyway. Okay. How wide is the Pine Street landing? The ramp? Yep. It's 30 feet at least. Yeah. 30? Because you can put no, uh, you can put three trucks down there. Yeah. It'd be about the same as this. And how Which wide is this one? No, this you would put two. Well. But if you add, okay. if you make that one 30 feet wide, it'd be the same as Pine Street. Okay. I like that one. Is that a consensus that plan one is the one? That, that looks fine okay. to me. Not being tarred and not being painted lines out, it's still going to be helter skelter. Helter skelter down there. So, Perhaps, just, yeah. So, that's too bad. Yes. Damascata's got a pretty good setup when it comes to that. I don't know if anyone's ever seen it, but. But they get a big parking lot. Yeah, they do have a big parking, parking lot. But yeah. I'm just saying how they get it laid out for trailers. I mean, we might be able to pave yeah. it. I mean, yeah. if there's yeah. grants yeah. available yeah. and things like that, I mean, I think that's a lot of this is dependent yeah. on grants and funding. Yeah. Yeah. I just yeah. want to point out that the work that's been done thus far is a grant. Right. So we, you know, that's a good thing. And I want to, because you're here and you're in public, 
Bill. <laughs> Pine Street Landing, there was a lot of people who thought when that topped over and with ice that that whole uh, thing was just going to go away and the stone was going to be a mess. That landing performed lovely. Everybody thought those capstones were going, the stones were going to go, the whole thing was just going to float away. So you did a good job designing that, and it did not float away. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. I did not. You knew it was like you were an engineer. Yeah. <laughs> you think. Good job. He did. I, I'm telling I can't tell you how many people called and said, it's getting up. It's, it's, it's about to t over. I'm like, it's supposed to. It was designed to do that, and nobody could believe it. So good job. I believed it. Public praise is always good. I was one of the donors. <laughs> it was working to a, a, a requirement um, to meet that elevation and not higher. So it, it I don't know if it did anything for the Elvers, but <laughs> I'm keeping my my sources silent. I put that my uh, my findings. <laughs> I think it would. Uh, Having lines of demarcation for the parking, I think, is important. Otherwise, it's not you're not going to park seven or eight uh, trucks in there, trucks and trailers, because they'll just go every which way, like they do now. And you know, mm -hmm. if they're lined up mm -hmm. exactly. as they should be, you can fit fit that many in there. Yeah. I think that would benefit everybody if there was some sort of <coughs> demarcation <coughs> there. Mm -hmm. I don't know what kind, but. Uh, in sort of boundaries. We all need our boundaries. You can put caution tape. <laughs> I'm sure he'll figure it out. Spray he has paint. his marching orders. Spray paint. He's an engineer. Maybe brick lines. Spray paint down to the ground. Oh, he'll, he'll figure it out. Yeah. I was thinking about, you know, spikes. <laughs> he'll figure it out. Very Thank good. you. Yeah. Very good. Thanks, Thanks very much. much. Yep. Sure Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks a lot. Follow that. Oh, you're fine. Okay, moving on. 12.3, unless there's anything else to say about this project at this point. No, uh, good. 12.3, streetlights. Mm -hmm. The old streetlights. Max is going to be short. Yeah, it's always streetlights. <laughs> so Walsh had a copy of the investment rate on it. It's finally been released. Unfortunately, it was soon after the last select like, board meeting when I initially thought I was going to get it. I've given you a summary as well of all the quick bullet points. So total project will be $78,950. That is including the acquisition from Central Main Power, which I have a copy of the bill of sale in my office. So when we're when this is approved, I and I get the finances from uh, our source, then we will get the acquisition, and this should be done in March, if I recall. Okay. That will be 2700K for temperature. We are not doing the smart controls. There is one item in here that, or two items, that I want to quickly address. The first is what they say for annual, or the financing. Page. What That's page? on page 14. That is, that was assuming we were doing the lease agreement that we were given back in April. However, that expired, I think, in May, so we had to get that updated. And after scrambling, uh, I got a different agreement from Androscoggin Bank, where the first payment will be done next year. So this is different from what I came to you, I think, two weeks ago about. Yeah, with MLC. With MLC. <laughs> with that, we had to give a 10% down payment. This one, we don't. That's going to be done. Our first payment will be done next year. And the interest rate will be at 3.29%. Even better. That's, I think, well a 1.3% difference. However, <laughs> this means that the payment amount will actually be 16943 a year. Last one, it was 17. It was, 17, no, 17. Well, this one's saying 17. What we had two weeks ago, that was going to be about 15,000. So that was because 10% was going to be paid up front. 
but I believe but you got a better interest rate. I got a better interest rate, and we should actually still be able to make that within the year since they only say we'll say fifteen thousand four hundred forty nine a year, but that's assuming we're putting twenty four dollars per fixture into the maintenance. So if we don't do maintenance, that's an extra twenty six twenty seven hundred. It's well worth it. It's well worth it. It's very well worth it. And the second item I wanted to address is on page 19. Those are uh, spare parts. That's not part of the final project cost. Spare parts. It's also sort of the smorgasbord of what we want to add into the project. So smart controls and the recommended spare inventory, which you'll find in Appendix B. So first of all, we would be checking off the first item, that's photo cells. So when it's like the classic TI-82 calculators, you know, once you cover it up, then it just fades down. It's going to be the opposite with these lights. Once the lights go up, once the sun goes out, then the lights will just automatically come on. Whereas with the smart controls, you could program a certain time. See you for later. It to happen. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Bill. You, Bill. Thank you. Thanks, Matt. Uh, so that's what we'd have when the sun's out, the lights would go on. That's what we'd be checking off. So for the spare inventory, they provide a recommendation. Again, on Appendix B, that's page 23. I believe they said it would be 5% 5, 5 of our inventory. So that's three of the three of the smaller standard ones. Those are the ones we're going to see everywhere in town. And then two more of the, the bigger mid-sized standard ones. I think I showed you pictures of those. Mm -hmm. And then one of the decorative fixture. That's going to only be one of the 12 that's in the downtown. I've shown you the picture of that. And then 10 photo cells. That's the node that's going to go on top of it so that, mm -hmm. as I just told you, that's going to add an extra $2,364 if we choose to have spare. Do you recommend that? I would almost not. I would. I haven't checked yet, but I will check to see if the decorative adds that, makes it that What price. are the other towns in our group doing? It seems to be getting a spare inventory, which is why I'm, I almost don't want to say it on TV, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but maybe we should negotiate how we do that. Right. Why don't you look into that? And I will ask them a bit more about that as well, mm -hmm. because especially but if we're all going to use the same maintenance. Code, and that's that's actually the point I was going to get. Everyone's going to be using the same one. Right. Decorative general spare rock parts. General spare everybody. parts, and then even Rockport's going to be having those decorative. So if there is an issue, we can probably work out an agreement to get the fixture from them. But I just think there'd be provide a cost to it. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, you I think there would be a common inventory that all of the towns could draw against rather than each one buying and storing and keeping track right. of. Right. So maybe we should just all put in so much. Why don't you research that and get back to us? I will certainly ask them about that. Uh, I just need to know if... So this investment grade audit is valid until, I think, December 30th. So if you want to wait to stew this over, see if there's any other changes or amendments you'd like to make, and that's fine, but I would need to have Julie's, I need to have the select board fine with this so that I can have Julie's signature on the December 10th meeting. May I ask just a couple more questions? No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Max. <laughs> The project costs is somewhat dependent on whether they need to get police and flaggers involved in certain locations. Right. Do we have any of those in Walterboro where there is concern for that kind of need? I actually believe there was someone who, there who was asking this very question if they could provide their own um, local department who certified it, and they said yes. Okay. Well, we, but we can't. We can't. We don't right. budget for it. Well, no, but... But if we get a call, that's our flaggers, and well, then you're out. The, so you'd have to use. The other part is that if I, you're talking on page 12, right? 
Uh, yeah. Those are just allowances, so in the event that that's happening. So there have been some cases where they don't go that full amount, so the project cost will actually be low. This is a worst case scenario. Okay. And because I think even at the bottom, yeah, because there's even this installation contingency. And I think they've got a 5% contingency on the installation. Right. And that might cover this kind of thing. But the other question is, uh, high voltage areas, um, they would have to do special things if the lights are going to be installed in or near high voltage areas. It's a safety issue, apparently. I can't. I mean, we have a high voltage line running through North Walderboro, but I can't imagine that that's going to be issue, an issue for this town. Okay. Oh, and uh, just another quick thing. Uh, this plan also does include two new light installations, one at the Route 1, 235 intersection. They have to go send someone out to see what the best location would be, and then one would be up at the Manktown Union Chapel intersection at that intersection, just uh, they would likely use the pole right at the light. And um, Old Augusta Road. Old Augusta Road already has one. Right. Uh, yeah. Nope, just those two new light installations. One other question. The contract that Julie would be signing tonight or tomorrow is with real term? Or right. is it with, this is real. It's not with the contractor who's doing right. the actual installation. Right. Correct. Who's who's contracting directly with the people who do the work? So who's installing? Yep. That would be Headstrom. Headstrom. Okay. So are we going to have a contract with Headstrom? No. That would be through real term. Real term. Okay. So they are. That there. was part of the professional right. services agreement that was Correct. signed. How long ago was this? All right. Just want to clarify. It. That's all. Yep. Thank hey. you. Oh, Katie first. Uh, someone called in and asked me this. I just want to clarify. LED lights. Right. Are there any health issues with that? There have been complaints for the more cooler colors, the ones that go to 4,000 or higher, the ones that are more blue light emitting. Some people have always reported either headaches or eye strain. We are choosing the warmer setting, which wouldn't have those issues. Okay. It's the similar to the lights you see right outside here. Okay. Um, and I also want to point out there was, I think, 20, I can't remember the exact number, Bob will probably remember it. It was over two, it was 2300 I think, for the library to install their lights. Right. Which the town is not paying for, no. that's specifically the library. Uh, and they'll handle that on their own. And I just got the check in the other day from Island Institute for this project. That's why um, the amount we're asking for from Andrew Scoggin Bank is 26, 76950 and not 78000 because I figured 2000 not going to the interest would probably be good. So. Okay. Is there any further comment or We need a motion concern? on that? We do. Okay. I, I would move on that. The to sign the contract with real yeah, yeah. The 70s, 6 or whatever it is. Or the seventy-eight thousand seventy-six. 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 It's That's seven, right, because we get that two thousand dollar allowance. Right, it's seventy-eight thousand nine hundred and fifty, but we have two thousand off from Island Institute. So, right. so that's the motion. Yeah, I'll second it. Okay. Any further discussion? <clears throat> All in favor? Wow. Thank you, Max. That's a lot of work you've done. done. Two and a half. Thank you. Um, can we pend the boards and commissions policy since it's 730? Is there a motion? So move. I'll second it. Second. All in favor? Okay. Um, item, I think it's 14 now. No, 13. 14. I don't know. 13. 13. Thank you. Also Agenda items for the next still. meeting? That meeting is full now that we. That's, now, that's right. <laughs> so we're, we're meeting, the select board's meeting at 5. Mm -hmm. We're having the combined meeting at six, hopefully, mm -hmm. yep. and then we'll be done for the year. Then we're we'll done. Meeting again until January. Okay. Wow, where is this year going? Right. Hmm. It's been a great year, wonderful year. Too fast. We have two executive sessions. Uh, should we do Philbrook first? So, yes. Yeah. So Daryl could go home. There's no Philbrook. It's assessors. No, it's assessors. You want to do the assessors? You mean? Yeah. 
Okay. Oh, okay. So let's do that. We'll do assessors let's and do then assessors executive. and then do the executive. Is there a motion to adjourn this meeting? So moved. Second. All in favor? Adjourn. Call this meeting to order. Are there any citizens' comments? Barring none, um, we'll go on to three. Approve the consent calendar. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Official action. Barrel. So the first item you have is number 24. Naomi is here. Um, this is on 102 Main Street. Um, you have copies of some photos where the shed and the barn or whatever they used it for at the back is basically totally gone. Pretty clear. So the recommendation is to abate that off. And then she had hoped to be here at the last meeting to discuss um, repairs which we basically denied saying there's no mortgage and somebody mentioned a Home Depot card or something, I don't know, but she would like to discuss that if she could. Is that executive session? If, if she wishes to discuss it as in this meeting, she could do those. Normally we handle those in executive, yes, so it would be up to her. Up to we are being taped basically so people can watch on TV. But I'm sorry? We are being taped. So people can watch. Okay. Uh, is that all right? You want yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Will this be coming down? Will this be? It's it's in the process of coming down. Okay, it looks like a good bonfire or something. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, the problem with that is that there's the house next door, and there's the building where they're doing. But the, it's being um, demolished. That's what I meant. It's just it's going to yeah. be demolished. But it's it's, it's, it's coming down. Um, the garage just collapsed mm -hmm. over the spring. It looks dangerous. That's. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't have property insurance because they will not insure it until yeah. it's totally down. So right. well, that's yeah. that's one, one of the one of the keys. And I understand. Um, but between that that issue and then the front porch leaking the roof, mm -hmm. I can't get insurance either. And meanwhile, I'm going to end up having to replace all kinds of things that if, if I had it had insurance, I wouldn't have been in the problem I was with the roof. Um, I have applied for a bank loan, um, and they said I have no credit because I'm on SSDI. Um, so, of course, I don't have any credit cards because why would I? I'm putting myself in debt. When So the possibility of getting a bank loan to do any of the repairs to the place is um, nil. Um, I even put up my truck as saying that they could hold my truck for collateral, and they still said that I didn't have enough credit to do anything. Um, I have talked to uh, CCAP. They looked at it, said the job was beyond their volunteer people. Um, they did suggest I come to the Philbrook Fund to see if I could get the money to do it. Um, I also am eligible for a grant, a $7,000 grant, because I'm 62. That would not have to be paid back. But although we worked very hard, saving money trying to pay up taxes. We did not get the last year's done before the loan papers could have gone in to get that $7,000. And somebody suggested the Philbrook Fund could pay the taxes, but I gather that even the Philbrook Fund would pay the taxes for us and put them back. There would still be a lien on the house, mm -hmm. and that would mean that they would still not pick up the didn't give me the grant for the seven thousand dollars of the repairs so I'm back to square one and needing to for two reasons the, the water damage that's happening inside um, and the fact that the house is cold because we had to take down all the insulation all the sheetrock 
what didn't start falling down because I wasn't aware of where some of the leaks were. Um, so we have in this whole front this 30, 30 by 8 room that houses the bathroom, the laundry room, and then the front room, which is a um, not a sunroom, but it has windows that um, there's a kitchen there was a kitchen table in, and it um, just the only other option would be to tear the whole thing off, and it would probably. From what my son said, who is um, who runs Crow Builders in Thomaston, um, it would be not good because it would take away a lot of the lighting in the house, and that it would also, um, by having to do, redo the walls, it would cost almost as much as it would to repair the roof, and to not have any light in the front of the house is just more than I can even imagine. Taking off the porch, well, it's decrease the light inside that. There's there's no there's no windows inside the house. Okay, so that it's the light in the porch. So so there's the light of the porch. Okay, but there are no windows. Yeah, because usually it's the opposite. Porches will take yeah. away the the lighting, particularly farmers' porches. I've been in that house. I'm sorry. I said I've been in that house. <laughs> I know. Oh. The layout in there. It had a lot of damage when we moved in, and there was um, just a lot of it's been repaired, but there's still um, the roof, the pitch of the roof. Um, there's one corner that's very low. If you're looking at the house, the left hand corner, which is where the bathroom and the laundry room area are. Um, so the water's constantly leaking in there. And we've tried covering it with tar, and we've um, we did a new roof, but there's something that's in between the seam of the edge of the house and the roof that just won't do anything without changing the pitch of the roof from three degrees to eight degrees. And then everything is um, punky, according to the carpenter that from CCAP that came and looked. Um, he pushed up something and it just kind of went up in. You know, so because of one of the options they thought was just to be able to to resheet that. Mm -hmm. So, Daryl, what exactly is the request? So, the request is for the abatement as the assessors, um, and then whether the, you want to reconsider the filbert fund, I guess. And then, I, I would move for the abatement. Second. We don't vote yet. Right. We don't vote yet. We can vote on that. Yeah, yeah we're this not is not an executive yeah. Yeah. session. Okay. Okay. Uh, we've made a motion. Yes, sir. There's Seconded. <laughs> Any discussion? All those in favor? And what's the Philbrook request? The Philbrook request was for three thousand nine hundred and seventy-three dollars and seventy-six cents to do roof, to do insulation, and to do sheetrock. And I guess part of the problem you've got an eighteen hundred square foot home with two people living there, and it's in nineteen hundreds in very poor shape. So you're just going to run into things going on and on and on. And I guess the question is if you considered selling the property and finding something that's more maintenance in your situation because of my two different cancers that I've had um, I have absolutely no credit my income is only eight hundred and forty eight dollars yes I could not afford to buy a new house um, well just, we understand the yeah. new house but if you you know that home is large um, uh, subsidized housing or into a unit or have you have two. has have you spoken to anybody that could help you with any type of services? Because the question would be, this is a band aid for then what comes next? What's the plan? And if that's what you're living on, that plan is going to run out very quickly. That's the only place the roof is leak. Anything is leaking. It's the only place it's any problem. It's okay. it's because I mean we do have the ability to 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 send you to places. Um, where you could perhaps get help and some financial counseling and help with your credit. So, I mean, I would tie um, 
I, I mean, I think that's something, too, that you have to actually consider because... The bank and I are talking about this. And, and you, But you should have somebody other than yourself speaking with the bank, CEI... to advocate. To advocate. You need an advocate, obviously. And if... What is the monthly income? 48. Is that just one person? There are two people, right? Two people. Right. And it's combined income? It's her income. Is zero for... Okay, no Social Security or... Yeah, you can't live on that. I, I, it, obviously, we need... So So that's... I mean, that's, that's what we have to really consider here, and, and for your own good, is how do we, how do we as the, the town, best help you? Um, so... So the best help me, you're saying that I need to leave the home that I'm... Oh, I'm not saying that at all. What I'm <laughs> saying is, what I'm saying is, is we need to find you services that can help you... Um, advocate. And, and advocate for you. So that, you're, thank you, Katie. That, that was the word I was looking for. Um, because I think that if you look at what that income is, that's 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 hard to live on. It I is. can imagine. And and I think that. But we, I don't have house payment anymore, so I've only got the taxes. And right. So I. But I think um, we've had great success working with um, Coastal Enterprises, um, and we can put you in touch with Jason, and he can probably help you find um, better financing or help you with your credit or whatever you need, but I, it's a holistic approach. So um, I think that would be a very good thing that we could help you with. Is there a way that instead of doing the whole insulation and stuff mm -hmm. that we could at least get the part for the roof, which was... Did Chip, did she apply at Chip? I did apply at Chip, and Chip, as I said at the beginning, they did not want to. They were going to help, and then they had somebody else come look at it. And the person said it was beyond their skill level. Okay. And like I said, I've got the option for the seven thousand dollar grant, and who's but that until my doing? until my taxes are paid. Now, is the abatement going to go on where? It'll go on the account. I, I good question. We're abating nineteens, but. You still have 18s outstanding, is what you're, or 20s, and you have 19s outstanding. It usually goes on the oldest, so it'll probably go on that oldest. But I would think so. I think it has to. So that would bring what I owe down to 15 something. Is that right? Yeah, it's 127 dollars and 40 cents. Is what the they just. One forty-five sixty. One forty-five sixty. Right. Yeah. It's separate from that. Yeah. yeah. So, by talking to Chip, my heap, um, the program, which is a USDA program of some sort, which is the one that mm -hmm. says that if I can get out from under without there being a lien with the taxes, and is there a possibility that? There's a way that it can be written so that it doesn't look like a lien, but that I agree that if the house gets sold or when I die, that it's it's paid back to you because that was what I understood that it was, which I have no problem with. I mean, even at some point, things might change and we'd be able to pay it all back, period. Right. Um, I'm just looking for something that's going to fix it so I don't freeze this winter. No, I, and, I, and I'm trying to figure out a way to not only deal with the short term, but the long term, because we can put a Band-Aid on it and then you'll be back, so. Um. Yeah, I would, I would suggest, uh, we, and we've done this before, um, a loan from Philbrook, uh, but conditioned, that we find a way of locating an advocate who can sort this through with you and get the problems, the, the core problems resolved. So, you could carry on. And this is something that can happen rapidly, so that <laughs> I've already gone through it. Well, the loan would happen rapidly if we're going to yeah. do a Philbrook loan. I don't. I, you'd have to take the pulse of the. See, my, my son is willing to to help fix it, and he's he's been a car. So the team. loan would be for the. 
39 the, the, the roof was 26 78 05 and then to replace the insulation and sheetrock it was another 1300 so the total request was 39 73 76 but then she's got the tax issue in that she owes 1519 taxes in all of this year's so, so there is a lien you're looking at a loan of 39 73 76 mm -hmm. off from the Philbrook I don't remember the Philbrook information so it's Copy of that. Well, it has not been cold, but we've burned almost 100 gallons of oil since November 5th. Because even though we've got this area blocked off, you can't block it off enough to. Oh, no, no. It, it's, uh, I... And, I ha and I have a friend who is giving us a one of those pellet heaters, mm -hmm. which we can put in that room, but it's the only room we can put it in because it's right to the outside. Right. So that will mean that I won't be using as much oil and I'll be heating the house better, which should keep it drier and, you know, not. Mm -hmm. But I can't put it out there till everything's fixed. And so, so, so you're, you. My, my, my motion would be uh, to have recourse to the, to the Fieldbrook Fund for a loan secured. Mm -hmm. And conditioned upon uh, getting a a navigator involved. Is there a second? Uh, just just process. Don't we have to rescind this? You would have to vote to reconsider, and you should do yes. it as selectmen. So it would be probably after this meeting you should do reconsider if you want to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then the only other question I had is somebody mentioned Home Depot or Lowe's or how easy is it to get credit cards or, or yes, because we tried at Lowe's already and Home Depot is equivalent to it and they look at you have no mortgage but they will not because I have no credit Vinny has had when his dad moved in and lived there um, he just messed up everything that there was I actually had to come back we've gotten divorced I had to come back and save the house by having the money that I had and paying the back taxes I could and paying the house payments that were overdue and um, I mean I, just personally the market is great right now people are renovating homes I would put it on the market and go to other housing I, it at just, almost 65 the idea of moving again especially having had cancer so, well, you know, but look at the condition of just the shed in the garage, and he hasn't taken care of that in the last few years. No, it's but not the, thing of it, the thing of it is, is that at this point, my son is advocating for me and saying, we are going to do this. It's like there's a camper sitting out front. And then he said it wasn't going. Well, yeah. I told my son it was going. He's got somebody that's going to haul it off. Who um, has title to the house? Is that in both of your names? It's in both of my names. You're divorced from him now. I'm divorced, but it's in both our names, and I have enough power to. I'm here, <laughs> you know. Um, he just since his dad died, he's not he's not there. Mm -hmm. um, he's he has some a big beam fall in his head. Um, I've been trying to advocate and get things like that taken care of. Um, get him some care, and they're saying there's nothing wrong with him, or they're saying he has to go to some kind of counseling thing that has to do with drinking, and he doesn't drink, he doesn't do drugs, and it's just... That's definitely where a community navigator will yeah. you know, do well. Yeah. So it's, it's me... Subsidized housing would be a nice option, because right? they, they maintain them. And that's what the neighbor navigator would help with. Yeah. So we, we would pen we, this until yeah. the executive session. Yeah, okay. we would move on as okay. the assessing. Okay. So we'll come back to you. Okay. Uh, the next item was uh, Ted Mills. Wait, there's motions on the table. No, well, they're no, they're going to have to be done I'll, I'll, I'll as the select board. board. Well, well they need to be rescinded. The executive session. Okay. But you need to. Did you did you second Clint? No. Nobody second. No. 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 Oh, that's right. So, so okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. Got on the floor. Fine. So let me understand. This is the debate has gone through. Yes. And you're going to take this to the next session, which will be when? In about ten minutes. Okay. So <laughs> do I need to stay or do You can go. You don't have to hang around. Okay. And somebody will be in touch with me to let me know what 
Or you can stay, and then you'll know. Yeah, yeah. you okay. can stay. Sit tight. Okay. <laughs> um, number 25 was Ted Mills. I had valued a tractor at 10000 It's actually a 2006 John Deere, so it would be valued at seven, uh, six. So the abatement would be 4000 Recommend that. Do you want a motion? So I move 7280. Is that the number? Okay. Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Um, he has a subdivision up there that hasn't sold lots, but it's, um, and then the one that actually I had down as being on the road was valued much higher as the rest when actually the way it was divided up, he still owns the road frontage uh, to that lot, it goes with his house, there's a little triangle, so it does not front uh, on the paved road, the, and there is a right of way, but he's going to cross the marsh with the power and the driveway, so I would recommend we value it as the other lots as unimproved and that would be a reduction of 13,000. It's valued at 20 now, and it would come down to seven. So the abatement would be? 236, 236. Yeah. So moved. Second. Any discussions? All those in favor? He owns the subdivision up there? That's yes. the road that goes yes. through the puddles? Yes. Yeah. And has not been able to sell a lot. Mm -hmm. um, Stephen Collins had an excavator out there at his new house, but it's actually a co-workers at BIW's that owns that, so it would be 364. So move. Second. All those in favor? And Ellie Groth has a piece of land left uh, on Route 1, but DOT has denied access. It's got to be because it's close enough to Main Street. they got to come off Main Street. So we'd recommend we reduce that uh, by the 127.40. So moved. Second. All those in favor? And the last two are... Louisa and Thomas Winchibatch down on Gia Lane. They have been trying to sell their properties. How many years? Well, I have that in 07, okay. they were asking 299000 for this piece of land. They're now asking 99000 for this piece of land, and they still can't get a buyer. I have 155000 on it. Um, the only thing I looked at it is a triangular, and if you adjusted for shape, would recommend that uh, we take uh, take it down to 99. No, nope. it would go from 155. They're requesting 56,000 off, uh, which would which be, be one would be 99. Would be ninety nine. Yeah. No, that's yeah, that's the thousand nineteen twenty. So you're looking at eight nineteen. Eight nineteen. Okay. Yeah. Which request are you looking at? The first one or the second one? The second, second one is a recommendation. You didn't print that out on your paper. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. At least I don't have a copy. So what is the first one? Four that's point. the request. It's there. The four point one point six? One thousand yes. nineteen twenty. Yes. Okay. Yes, Katie, yeah. Have you got that one? Is that what you're talking about? The other number? No. Eight nineteen. Yeah. But do you have this packet? Yeah. I do. I'll print it out. I'm not keep the copy. Yeah. Yeah. It would be one ten. Oh, one ten. I just didn't have a copy of that. Thanks. 110 instead of 99. 99. They requested to go to 99. I recommend it go to 110. So I move eight, 819 for 4.1.6. So the abatement would be 10, 10, 19, 20? No, no, that's the request. Uh, that is the request. So what would the actual abatement be? 819. 819. Oh, this one. Okay. Column way over. Oh, I see it. Thank you. Yep. 
you make a motion? Yes. I'll second it. All those in favor? And the last one is their home. Uh, again, they started, this one goes back to 2012. They were asking four ninety nine nine. Jesus. Um, they are down to asking three fifteen and possibly close to a buyer, but still no buyer. Um, it is a modular uh, ranch, very plain, very little landscaping as far as the yard and whatnot, but just cannot seem to find buyers there. Um, the only thing I could see there would be dropping it to a C grade. They're asking for 1,110.20 off, but recommend 291.20. The land is valued like all other land on the river, and, and that's dropping it to a C grade house, which was a C10 previously. What does that mean? C is average, and usually newer construction would be a plus 10. Um, lots, most homes on the water are B or A or higher. So they're in lot numbers 57C, 57B? Correct. And B is the triangle that we just did, and okay. their house so that's is their at C. access point. Yeah. Am I, am I looking at that correctly? Correct. They have okay. a right away and it goes yep. through to that. Yeah, they do. I've been in that house. Okay. We looked at that when we were looking. Did you notice it went from a three bedroom to a two bedroom in the paperwork? I didn't. I did. The okay. septic is approved for two bedrooms. It changed so. to an office. I think that makes a difference. Yeah. I moved to 9120, 4.17. Second. All those in favor? We can adjourn as assessors. And then we have to go into the executive. So I'll move the adjourn as assessors. Yeah. Second? Thank you. Second. Second. Okay. Okay, and now we All those in favor? We need to call Seven. the meeting to order and select one again and then go into executive session pursuant to 4056F, the Philbrook Fund trustee. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Okay, we're in executive session 20-9. Yeah. Okay. Are we, are we back? You were back. Into select board meeting? Yes. So is there a motion for 2020-9 in the amount of uh, 3,973.76? I'd make a motion that we reconsider 2020-9. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll second it. All in favor? Okay. Now, are you motion? What? We need a motion uh, on 2020-9 in the amount of 3973.76, subject to um, a lien uh, in favor of the town on the property. So moved. Sorry, there's one more subject to. Oh, sorry. Um, the subject to also a, a community navigator getting involved in the process and helping out. That's, that's the motion. Okay. Is there a second? Second. All right. Any further discussion? All in favor? Right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now you need to do another motion to go into executive for the contract. Right. <laughs> we, so we need a motion under so section 405-6C <laughs> yep. to go into a discussion of a contract. That second. Was a, that was a motion, Clint? Yep. Second. second. All in favor? Thank you very much.